Hello, my name is Alexander Barkov. I'm a server developer at MariaDB. And today I'd like to tell about a few tasks improving consistency, performance, compatibility, and ease of use in MariaDB server that I had a chance to participate in recently. Uh, this is the plan for the session. Uh, first, let's discuss a couple of optimized tasks, then um, tasks improving Unicode support, and then a few tasks improving stored procedures and compatibility. Uh, the first optimized task improved performance in cases when we compare a timestamp column to a daytime constant expression. Historically, daytime is compared to timestamp as daytime because daytime has a wider range than timestamp. Then uh, two different timestamp values can have the same daytime value near the daylight saving time change and uh, near ellipse accounts. And also, now there are daytime gap values during the spring forward DST change, and MariaDB adjusts those values inside DST gaps to the start of the gap. Um, comparing as, date, as daytimes takes all these irregularities into account, but it is quite slow. Uh, the timestamp side gets converted to daytime per row, and this involves a slow local time R system call. Uh, so this task implements the idea is, uh, which is uh, when uh, uh, the daytime site is a constant and the daytime site is inside a reliable wide monotone continuous period, then uh, those arguments can be compared as timestamps. So we can compare the daytime argument once to timestamp uh, at, uh, at the statement prepare stage. And then during the raw processing, no, uh, no data type conversion is needed anymore. Uh, benchmark, benchmarking on a 1 million rows showed quite a good performance improvement. The next thing uh, in Optimizer uh, adds new notifications if an index cannot be used by the range optimizer because of data type mismatch or collation mismatch for text data types, for text string data types. And, uh, Notifications can be shown either in the show warnings statement output or in slow log. Uh, these notifications are off by default for backward, backward compatibility. So to enable them, one can type as a DBA, DBA of the following script and then run a new user session. And so now if uh, statement uh, it uses uh, comparison predicate in the in the where clause or a like predicate or in and between predicate uh, the, and the index cannot be used uh, a new message is a, a new message uh, a, a, and can set it to the diagnostics area. So you can type show warnings to see what was wrong. So in this example, uh, the message says that the KA uh, wasn't used because it, it is of, because the, the column A is of type RCAR, but the comparison is done as an hour and indexes cannot uh, be used in this case. Uh, also, these notifications works, work in case of joins as well. And now, if we, can, if we take a look into a slow log, we can see the usual 
output. Uh, uh, there is a, a new part uh, printing exactly the same notes that we uh, saw in the show uh, warnings output on the previous side. So this new feature makes debugging your keys um, much easier. Uh, the next group of tasks improve performance and Unicode compliance in MariaDB server. Uh, uh, in 10, 10 one we added a number of new Unicode collation algorithm collations based on Unicode version 14.0.0. Uh, but uh, we didn't just add new weights. Uh, this task made much more. So first of all, uh, um, these new collections can be used without the character set name prefix. And the character set uh, prefix is detected automatically from the context. This is a step towards the SQL standard, which says that a collation can be applicable to multiple character sets. Uh, to list uh, new collations, one can type this show collation statement. As you can see, uh, there are no prefixes, there are no character set prefixes in collation names, and uh, there are accent insensitive and case insensitive and part no part combinations. Uh, one um, uh, language neutral collations, UC, UCA 14.0.0 was added, uh, uh, and also all language specific collations, which we supported in the previous implementation of UCA collations, were added as well. Uh, and so here on the output, you you can also see that uh, the card set and the ID and the default columns are not. Uh, that actually means that this exact collection can be applicable to multiple card sets. Um, the list of new collections can also be extracted from the table a collation character set applicability in, in the information schema database. Uh, so here we can see old columns collation name at character set name, which were in this table before the change. And there are also three new columns, full collation name, which, which uh, displays collation names, including the character set name prefix. And uh, there are two other columns ID and is default. Uh, the fact that we don't have to type collation prefixes for these collations makes uh, the, it makes it easy to use them. So uh, here in, in this example, I create two columns uh, with different character sets, and I type collation names without the character set and prefix, and show create table displays that uh, the same name uh, UC fourteen zero zero ASCI was was uh, translated into uh, into two different collations automatically using uh, the card set context. Um, another task uh, which was implemented immediately after the UC1400 collations uh, was, uh, was updating K-folding, case folding data from the latest Unicode um, files. So if we compare case folding.txt uh, between Unicode 5.2.0 and Unicode 14.0.0, we can see that about 
400 something new entries were added and of course our old calculations didn't support all of them because we didn't update this data since those calculations were added for back com backward compatibility purposes so uh, the new uh, the new calculations uh, the uh, unicode 14 based calculations of course um, so, of course take uh, all those new case folding prayers into account and uh, this slide demonstrates this. Um, the next uh, task improved uh, performance of the UC collision algorithm. So uh, the intent was the intent was to improve performance on the ASCII range and on the uh, two byte card card range. Uh, so a switch from UTF-8 uh, general CI to new collations uh, does not uh, does not degrade performance of the server. So this does demonstrate that uh, that uh, new new collations are not really bad. Uh, and uh, this task, also, uh, this page also compares performance of uh, MySQL uh, 0900 AICI calculation to MariaDB UCA 1400 AICI calculation. And uh, as you can see, uh, MariaDB is much faster on the one and two byte card range, uh, which is really important. Uh, but it's a little bit slower on the three and four byte ranges, which uh, should be tolerable. Another Unicode related tasks. Uh, it's a new simple variable to to choose uh, a default collation for a card to set. Uh, so if you take uh, Pre MDF 30164 uh, server and type this create statement. Uh, then uh, the card to set UTF 8 and before close uh, what was all this actually translated into card to set UTF 8 and before collate UTF 8 and before general CI because this collation is the hard-coded default for UTF-8 before. And uh, the only way to choose a non-default collation was to type to type the, the collate clause explicitly, which of course was not very convenient for, for, for example, German users or all the users using non uh, using language specific collations. Uh, the new variable makes it much easier. So, no annoying collate clauses are needed anymore. Uh, you can set a new uh, variable character set collations to a list of comma separated car set equals collation pairs. For example, like this, like on, on this slide. And after that, uh, this soft default will be used uh, instead of the hard-coded default. Uh, so um, if I set card set collations to uh, UDF8 before equals you say 14 German 2 A I I C I comma latin one equals latin one german two ci which will the typical german user do and then uh, if i create a table without specifying the late closing columns uh, after the card set closes then uh, um, the card set clause is translated is extended Taking into account the new uh, the new variable value, 
And of course, this variable can be added to my CNF file. So you don't have to type this set character set collations in every session. Um, another Unicode related task uh, makes MariaDB server print the collate clause even if the collate even if the collation is the default collation for the character set. Uh, previously, uh, to save space, the collet clause was not displayed in such cases. Now, to address this change with character set collations variable, uh, the collet clause is displayed always even if it's equal, even if the collation is equal to the current soft default of the current set, or even if it's equal to the hard default. Uh, this is needed for backward compatibility, and this task was implemented in all releases starting from 10.3, even before uh, this new variable character set collations was added. The next set of tasks uh, were done to improve routines, uh, stored routines and compatibility. And the first task, raw variables do not get assigned from Saxilex. Uh, fixes the problem that uh, the set statement with a row variable on the left side and the subselect on the right side didn't actually work. So it, uh, the syntax was accepted, but nothing happened. Uh, the row variables, the members of the row variable um, didn't change. They, uh, they kept the null value. And after this change, everything works consistently. So no, no matter what you use, select M2 or set row variable equals subselect, uh, everything works correctly. And the next uh, task is uh, the row data type as a stored function return value. Uh, so uh, a stored function can now return either uh, explicitly typed row when you list all its members and all and together with their data types, but also you can type uh, to use the structure of this row from a table. For example, row type of T1 uh, says that the structure of this row should be loaded from the table T1. And also on the terms of this task, uh, the type of T1.call1 um, makes it possible to use the data type of a scholar return value from a table column. And also in the Oracle compatibility row, um, similar and core data types were implemented. T1% row type tells to, to get the structure of this row from the table, T1 and T1 call one percent type tells that uh, the data type of the function should be taken from the table column. column. Uh, so this example demonstrates and, uh, this new feature, and it really brings uh, the ease of use of stored procedures, of the ease of use of writing, uh, sorry, the ease of writing stored procedures to a new level. So uh, uh, take a look into this create function statement. So what it says, um, the function, uh, the data type returned from this function should be taken from the table T1, and, and uh, the subquery can be even uh, typed, uh, typed 
as a return value. And so uh, and this is the anonymous blog demonstrating how to use this function returning row. In, it take it makes uh, writing stored procedures and function really easy. Instead of adding, instead of adding new parameters to functions, whenever you add new columns to a table, or instead of instead of changing the data types of the function parameters of every time when you change the structure of your table. You can just type that the function returns you know, the row of, of the table type. Another highly requested task was that uh, the Oracle compatibility mode didn't support CSVERF cursor. Now, uh, this task makes it possible. So here I create a table, and then I create a function, and uh, the return type of this function is CSF cursor. So then I, inside the function, declare a variable of uh, CSF cursor data type and open uh, this cursor for the given select statement, and then I return the opened cursor as the function result. And inside the procedure, the stored procedure P1, uh, I, I use this function to initialize a cursor variable uh, and assign the function value to this variable, and then you can find the regular um, loop fetching data from this cursor. Uh, like um, it looks exactly like it would look in case of stable cursors or static cursors. And, uh, the second column on the screens demonstrate exactly the same script for the Oracle compatibility mode. And the third, the third column displays the output from from uh, the procedure P1. The next task implemented Oracle style packages for SQL mod equals default. Originally, Oracle style packages were implemented for SQL mod equals Oracle only, and it happened a few major releases ago. I think it was in 10.6. Now, it's possible to create Oracle style packages for the default SQL mod as well, and of course, using uh, the SQL SQL PSM dialect uh, instead of Oracle's PL SQL dialect. And so uh, for those people migrating for, from Oracle are very familiar with these packages, and for those who are not, uh, I'll briefly discuss, I'll briefly tell what a package is. So a package is a group of functions and procedures and variables related to each other and incorporated into a single container. And the package is created in two steps. First of all, you uh, issue a create package statement, and inside the statement you describe all public functions and procedures that this package will have. On the, st on the second step, you uh, issue a create package body statement, and, where, uh, and there you put uh, bodies of uh, Functions and procedures that were described in that were declared on the first step. 
Um, and then uh, these package routines can be used from a session. So, for example, call amplitudes.harstd uh, calls um, the function harstd from the package amplitudes from the current database. And one more interesting thing in package in the package is that it can have an execu executable session. Uh, you can see it on the right upper uh, bar. And this executable session uh, section gets executed. Then a package is uh, then a package function or a procedure gets called in the current session for the very first time. So uh, uh, all this package reminds uh, C++ class where you can have private and public methods and you can have a constructor and the executable section is a kind of constructor. And the, the only difference with uh, C++ class is that there can only be a single instance of a package inside a session. So you, didn't, you don't need uh, to instantiate it somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets instantiated whenever you call its routine for the very first time in this session. Uh, thank you. That was all for the session for today. And now if we have some time, um, I would love, I would be, I would be happy to answer your questions if you have any.